button, which is right here at the top. One night, two guys came in. They had all the drink. So I had the bartender throw them out. They looked pretty pissed off. They came back the next night and they tried to steal the cash register from the front of the bar. John saw what's going on from the back. He slammed down his beard to clear a linebacker house and he goes up front and starts pounding on these guys. Beat the hell up. A couple of gunshots go off during that bar fight. John got grazed in the neck, but it goes past him and into the wall. He's the only one that got shot. He's the only one that got up. Goes back to the bar and tells the bartender, get me another beer, we'll get those two guys an ambulance. Irony of the story. Nobody died. If I tell you that a building is haunted, you're preconditioned to think that some tragic death occurred here. And that's not the case. It's a bullet hole. It's allegedly still here. Even if this renovation of Big John's filled it in, it basically sealed Big John's blood inside the building. The people that sit in the front of the bar tend to get a little queasy, nauseous, or headed. This is why we started. This is a heated warning to the six strangers that are standing in front of me. I'm taking you guys out on a ghost hunt. I don't know how it's going to affect you. Anybody gets any of those symptoms that I just mentioned, headache, nausea, dizziness, let me know, and we'll blame the weather. It is hot and humid. Yeah. And I'm guessing that you guys aren't used to this. Where are you guys from, by the way? Jersey. Jersey. Oh, yeah, you're definitely not used to this humidity. Um, so, for sure. Maybe the heat at this point. The heat, yeah, but not the point, humidity. Not the humidity. humidity is really, really yeah. bad. Um, so, again, I'm not the TV show host where everything's going to be a ghost. I think I'm making my point very, very clear. Yes. Moving on. Let's get your mind off your own health. Because that is probably the scariest thing I'm going to tell you all night because it deals with your health. Okay, so you've got to keep going. We had a big earthquake here in 1886. You guys just got into town today, which means you haven't taken any tours yet. You haven't really been anywhere yet. But you're going to hear about this big earthquake of 1886 because you're in South Carolina. We're not supposed to have earthquakes. We get hurricanes, as you guys already know. She's in South Carolina. But the building, Big John, allegedly, where the first death occurred from that big earthquake. So apparently a piece of the white mantle that you see in the middle of the building broke off, hit somebody in the back of the head, killed them. Now, the previous owner of this bar, in between the two different Big John renovations, you can see dark shadows in the middle of Bay Street after closing. Notice I said allegedly a lot with that story. I have no proof whatsoever. Just a great segue so nobody's worried about getting sick on the tour while we're out and about, even though I just brought it back up again. That was supposed to be a joke. Chocolate, chocolate. Are you guys ready to... <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Um, so, are we ready to learn more about your beer? Yes. All right. We're actually going to go up this way. So, we're going to go up this way. If you were recording, you don't need to just yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, to get these puppies rolling. By the way, you want to keep them rolling for the entire duration that we are in a space. We don't want to re record in between spaces and recreate the Blair Witch Project because that was a horrible movie. Nobody wants to watch that crap again, um, especially if it's your own experience. Um, so yeah, all you got to do is hold it nice and slow, and you'll be listening in with her in just a few minutes. Perfect. Um, welcome to a parking lot. Congrats. You made it. Um, I know. I took you to weird spaces. Here's why we're here. This place used to be something relevant to the history of Charleston, which makes it obviously very historical for us. But where are you? You're at the Charles and Eliza Pinckney Mansion site. So who the heck were these people? Charles and Eliza had a son named Charles that had a nephew named Charles. They had three Chucks, in case you weren't paying attention. That's why we look for those secondary clues. I need to know which Charles is coming through so we know how to address them. They are indeed three different men. Um, now, the son and the nephew were signers of the Constitution for South Carolina. I hate politics more than all of you, so we're going to move on. If I don't give the gentleman that recognition, they're going to do it for me in a nasty manner through a spear box. So I just make sure give him that recognition, and we'll move on to, you know, obviously, Eliza, which is who the focus is here. Now. Eliza marries Charles at a young age according to today's standards. I say it slowly like that because if you're going to ask, do not expect numbers from the colonial days, the 1700s, when young ladies got married at the ages of like 12 and 14. Think of today's standards because the husband was over double her age. If it was creepy then, it's creepy now. I'm just going to put that out there. Um, so put it in the back of your brain. Sometimes I have to put my foot in my mouth and I have to look around at my couples that I have. I'm like, oh, they're definitely not that age gap. Uh, sometimes it is, and I, I'm definitely wrong. Uh, but anyway, so she married him because her father was over in England. Dad thinks he's dying. He's trying to bring all his kids home one last time so he can see him. Eliza didn't believe he was dying, so she stayed put right here and got married. It's 1744. You do not get married in that particular year to earn a green card. We are not a country. So this is a true love story. If anything, this is a place of respect. Nothing horrific has happened here. Just so you know, this is a happy place. So I just like to put that out there. This is definitely a place of respect. Moving on, she was correct. Dad did not die right away. Instead, he starts sending her gifts from England to where you're standing. One of those gifts happened to be the plant seeds of indigo. Indigo is a plant that makes blue dye, makes your blue jeans blue, and nobody's wearing blue jeans. <laughs> um, so, not even denim of any kind. Um, so, that's how we use the seeds now. But when she got those seeds, with no idea what to do with them. She had to learn from her servants and slaves how to keep it going. So, when she learned how to keep it going, because it's not always hot here, she learned how to make the dye, moved it to a cash crop, got a hold of dad overseas, and told him that the rice plantations are going downhill. They're going to make a killing with the indigo. And we now have an international businesswoman during colonial times. That's something absolutely unheard of. So, that's the boring business stuff from Eliza. Let's get into the weird shit, because that's why you guys were here. 
Um, so here's what's going to happen with this location. I'm going to give all of the communication devices, all three of you, focus questions. Uh, you can either say these things out loud or you can just focus on them. No right or wrong way to do it. I'm here every night. It's not like she can't hear me and know that we're already here to know what I'm already going to be asking. Because it's pretty much the same set of questions every single night. Um, so Christian, we're going to start off with yours. You're going to focus on four major things about her death. So again, her, she's pretty open about talking about it. You're going to focus on how old she was when she died, what she died from, where she's buried, which president was a pallbearer at her funeral. You know what a pallbearer is? So think of a funeral when people are carrying the, the casket to the grave. The people carrying the casket are called pallbearers. Okay, so there was a president that did that for her. Yeah, big deal. Um, so I know I just like to kind of put that in perspective. Um, so yeah, if you go rogue, which by the way, I'd like to point out, we are running two cameras plus my voice recorder and three communication devices. He might be asking those questions. You might get the answer. They might show up on the audio from your camera. We never know where this stuff's going to fall. Even if it was just the two of you, like this was originally planned because they booked later today, um, earlier today, um, we would still at least have uh, two communication devices to kind of verify what the other one was doing. Yeah. Uh, so kind of keep that in mind. Um, so with yours, you're going to be focused on Eliza's maiden name. The reason why, Eliza that I just spoke of, who grew the indigo plants, she was the second wife named Eliza from Charles back to back. The first wife was also named Eliza, but her maiden name, the name she had before she married Charles, was also started with the letter L. Both of them start with the letter L. So we're going to figure out which Eliza we're dealing with by asking what her maiden name was. You can also focus on the marriage questions. Um, you can ask how long they were married, anything about the marriage. The marriage was very happy, so let's keep everything kind of in a happy mood at this location, just out of respect. Um, so again, just be kind of respectful of that. With yours, it gives us one to two syllables only. So I always yeah. have a set set of questions for you. The mansion's not here unless you can see it and I can't. Um, by the way, the layout of the land, by the way, is a mansion in the front. Eliza's garden lined up with the Five Church restaurant going across. And we're actually standing in the servant slave quarters with a home. Uh, just so you kind of have the idea of where yeah. things are. But the mansion's not here. Ask what happened to it. If you get the what, or anybody else gets the what, you often get two or three numbers from the date of when that occurred. Okay. Um, so if you're going to go rogue and ask your own questions, three little rules. No yes, no questions. We've already covered that over there. Uh, be respectful, just based on the space of what it actually is. Do not ask about her children. I will explain before we leave the space. Okay, so don't poke the bear. Um, yeah, we're all going to spread out. Um, I think, yeah, everyone's got places that are pretty easy to use. I don't have to look anybody behind them. Do I have to think out loud? You don't have to. I mean, if you just want to focus on it, that's why they're called focus questions. Sherry knows why we're here. We're asking the same questions we do every night. Remember, you might be getting answers that he's asking about. So again, do those lights like, always go on and off by themselves? Okay. I just wanted to make, I'm like, I don't see, I thought they were, but I don't see anything going and by they, them. Yeah, they do not emit any EMF at all that Julia's measuring. So I've gone through when they installed them last year, and I measured every single gotcha. one of them. Gotcha. Okay. Just to verify. Yeah. Um, so have you seen any numbers yet, by the way?
She was supposed to help her listen. What are you doing? Oh. I thought we were supposed to go separate ways. No, no, no. So, okay. So the reason why I gave you guys... So we advice. work together. I got Correct. you now. Well, I apologize. That, it doesn't record. Oh. So if she misses something, it'll be on your audio. Oh, gotcha. I'm okay. yelling. No, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, no, I appreciate <laughs> that. I told you this is not my... Th I mean, But you're here to have fun too, right? Yeah, and I do mediums and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I don't personally do it. I, I go to you them. You go to them. Right. Yes, sir. Cool. Have you heard anything? I thought I heard purple. What's the color? Purple. Okay. And then Jean. I don't know about the name or if it's like, like Jean. I'm more interested in purple. Here's yeah. why. There's a ghost that follows me around the city. And that's the code word to let me know wow. that here. Because we don't normally hear the word purple on the radio. So that's why I assigned it to you. That's crazy. Is it though? And you can go back and check my yeah. other investigation to be able to see that the word purple is the one I give him. Because um, again, kind of, we're going to have access to everybody's yeah. investigations for the past year. It's a rolling 12 months on my website. So if you want to go back and look at your anniversary, your birthday, whatever, yeah. you can do that. Perfect. Okay. So, I'm following you. Yeah. I have to record your stuff. Well, so as long as you're nearby, we can have to find directly at her. As long as you're like helping her listen. Because again, it's fun to try to get yeah, words of course. out of that. So, yeah. And she'll she, teach you a few things. She was excited. She wanted to do this. Where do you see what I'm going to do to her at the end? No, I'm She's good. like, yeah. I keep trying to ask about the mansion. I heard a sentence from a man, but I don't know what it said. I cut, it literally was like a boom. I'll ask it again. Man. Eliza, what happened to the mansion? What happened to your mansion? It's like radio. Like just, it's, it's like static here. There's nothing. I went, I hear I got stuff. How about over in the corner? Not really. I'm just going to keep walking up and down. Tom. Tom? Tom. I don't know if there's anything to do. What were the other it questions? Went, it went, Tom, nothing. You just said, you want to get a... It's crazy. I want to get a... Eliza, what color was your mansion? What else goes it? What day did they get married or what day did she pass? No, oh. I'm just a man trying. Eliza, can you try to answer me what happened to your mansion? Why is it not here anymore? I'm going to walk back to Richard Garden. Garden. We got Tom. Tom and Gar Guard. 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 Garden. I think it's a, I think guard. But Tom was like clear. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. And yellow. I didn't, I didn't hear. No, I thought you said yellow. No, just Tom and guard. That's all I heard over there. Okay, I'll scratch out yellow then. Yeah, yeah. sorry. I, I thought you said yellow.
Dead. Are you even? That was a sentence. Uh, that was clear, she too. She said, are you even? That was very clear. That was crazy. He said, are you even? That was a man. Yeah, it was. Pause. Eliza, why did you drain the camera's battery? Or if it's not Eliza, what's your name? Tina. Can you repeat your name? Can you use a little more energy to tell us your name? It sounded like glass breaking. It was, it was going crazy. Yeah, it was. Right up in that front. I wonder where the master bedroom was. Oh. Am I talking to a male or a female? From him. Uh, brother, like, Tina, Tina. Yeah. and then the broken glass down. Girl, but that was the sign. That was oh, okay. Just it. It was just like brother, and it sounded like um, either break, like glass, like breaking, glass break, or like, shattering, or like metal to metal kind of thing. And then it was going crazy for like two minutes, and then it's actually relevant to the uh, time that you heard earlier. So let's oh. wrap it up. See what we got going on. Should I keep recording, Nick, or save the battery? Yeah, go ahead and hit the pause button. You're already on record. Um, you actually want to try to get a view of one way the alley going to be one way or the other. It doesn't necessarily need to be within the circle of them. Okay. The better view is if we're going to get anything with that camera. It's probably going to be one way or the other. Yeah. Okay, and I'll just stay this okay. way. So, um, so three men. Are that's what we love here. Alright. Love yourself, though. That's, that's, that's the 
Well, love yourself is a quote for Philadelphia. For what? Philadelphia. Yeah, Philadelphia and this is Philadelphia yeah. Alley. Okay. Yeah. The We're only thing, 20 minutes from Philadelphia. The only thing I got on the way here was, um, would you pipe down? Yeah, I'm, I'm pointed down okay. to the ground. I'm not on them. Uh, well, they can still see your red light. Oh, okay. Um, so, I know they might be just been passing by. They're coming up the stairs. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, so, they're coming up the stairs. 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 Okay. Uh, so, they're coming up I didn't realize that we were out of bounds for tours. Oh. So oh, wow. So the new owner of the mansion came out screaming. My daughter thought it was great because her dad's getting yelled yeah. at. She thought it was hysterical. <laughs> and she was laughing her ass off. We moved on. The next day was Thanksgiving. I don't tour on holidays, especially Thanksgiving, because I worked in upper management for Walmart before I started doing this. You guys like to fight over cows on Thanksgiving. You start Jesus. Yeah, so I don't work on holidays anymore. The next day was the 28th of November. So I called my partner that morning and I told him what happened with the neighbor. And he laughed at me just like my daughter did and said, dude, you're only allowed to go down halfway. It's residential down there. We watch your group. So I was like, all right. I didn't have a story for over there. But what I told my group was, I don't believe in the next story because I'm into vampires, not pirates. So normally I would tell you a pirate story next, but I've been kicked out of that place too. We'll talk about that later on. But here's what happened then. Somebody with a spirit box heard the name Anne before we left here. I didn't tell them which pirate we were going to be investigating. The speed female pirate, Anne Bonnie. She's kind of like, a, okay, maybe we'll get something. I took them up and around the corner, told them what I knew about pirates in Charleston. Not much, by the way. Somebody else with a spirit box heard the number 300. They know what it meant. Wrote it down, did the research. We were there November 28th of 7, or 2020. Anne Bonnie's uh, trial for piracy, November 28th of 1720. Ah. Wow. 300 anniversary of her piracy. So. For four and a half years, well, basically, yeah, four and a half years, uh, I was doing a shit ton of research on pirates, and I had a pretty damn good story going, and we actually had a lot of activity. And then we got booted out of that space because we're basically dissecting it to see if it can be fitted for tours, because it's literally an open parking lot, that's what we're doing. Um, however, here's what's going to happen when we go up around the corner. You guys are hopefully going to hear things from this alley, from Doc Lab, when we go up around the corner, because we're going to be talking about the cemetery over here when we get over there. Um, the camera that she's using, uh, it's going to be the major feature because we're going to be dealing with an apparition. 
Uh, her camera sees things that we cannot, so hopefully we're going to capture the apparition with her camera. Uh, but obviously we're going to be using this one as well, so in the event that she finds, or I find something in the spot check of these, I want to see how that camera reacted as well. Uh, so that way I get to learn about it. I have yet to capture an apparition with that camera, so I'll learn how both cameras interact with it. I will tell you guys the story and, and piece of it ahead of time. Um, and then I'll have to explain our last two stops because it's completely different than everything else we've been doing. So Christian, we'll start with you. Did you hear anything while we've been down here? What did you hear while we were down here? Uh, okay. So what were some of the things? Just what were some of the things that stood out to you? I haven't been looking at it yet. Let's get, are you on record? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. Right here. And then her grave is in the back next to that cross. Do you see the cross headstone in the back? Mm -hmm. Hers is to the left of that and one more row back. We were actually closer to her back in the alleyway. We just didn't have any view of her. So uh, just keep your cameras nice and still for about five minutes. Let's get you unmuted. Let's put them in for a few. Kind of see what we can get out of this. Let's see what we got. Yeah, I'm feeling a couple of grips on that tree, too. You guys see the light off to the left? Mm -hmm. The church put that there on purpose so nobody would try to recreate this, but obviously you can see my cameras like dart right through the light yeah. flares that it would cause. So, you might have one little light flare on yours, Barb, but it, you're not going to see a whole lot of it unless yeah. you're moving the camera. Where is the grave? Right there in front of it? So, on the other side of the tree? Uh, so, it's the you see the cross headstone in the background? Yes. It's to the left of that, one more row back. So we're hoping, yeah, kind of. mainly with, with the camera that Barb has, that it's going to capture some kind of motion back there, and then hopefully I'll see a cold spot it's on your camera. camera. Interesting. I don't know if the husband's buried back there or not. I don't usually care about the gender with spirit boxes, unless it's disembodied. Okay. That was a sentence right here. Christian, you got anything coming out? Ellie, how's our words? Uh, just they. Just they. A whole lot of vagueness. <laughs> a whole lot of nothing. Very close to me. Didn't say I wasn't sure if the husband was buried back there. So if you can hear us, if you want to tell us your husband's name, that would be fantastic. That would prove that you're actually here.
and you guys are gonna have jobs with me later as fillers are holding those cameras. You should sure. believe half the videos that I get back from these tours. The thermal especially needs to be perfectly still because there's a lot of layers in there and the more he moves it, the more those colors fluctuate. Are we looking for like black and blue? Uh, anything black and blue that's going to move. Uh, but I will watch the this camera first when I go through the spot check just to kind of see what's going off there in the distance. And you actually have to zoom. I'm sorry, yeah. I forgot to show you that. Water. I assumed it because you actually have... I just didn't want to touch it because I didn't oh, know how you it. wanted it. Not me. Boring. This is your night. <laughs> I, I'm just here for the interpretation of stuff. Well, really, Nina's night. Yeah, it is. So you're not messing with it. Even that, the, the light is drained. You see, there's only two dots up there? Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be down that far. Oh, wait, wait we didn't switch out the light. From, we didn't switch okay. out the light, just the battery. Gotcha. Nice. Hope we're near a cemetery. Yes, it's nice. <laughs> Got secret. The secret. Oh, I forgot to explain the giant's piece that he heard. So, Big John that we talked about earlier, nobody knows where he's buried. My suspicion is he's buried here because to be buried on this side of this cemetery, you have to be from Charleston. Um, he's from Charleston, and his funeral services were downtown. And we'd be getting small little clues relevant to Big John while we've been around this vicinity. And Giants, if you recall, he played for the 1947 New York Giants. So, why would we hear the, the word Giants when we are in Charleston? Exactly. No such thing as coincidence with me. So, is I'm going to look... the cemetery again? This is St. Philip's. Okay. By the way, the, there's two sides to the cemetery. Natives are buried on this side. Across the street is everybody else. So, if you're not from here, you go across the street. Anybody know the difference between a graveyard and a cemetery? No. Graveyard is actually where the church building is because the church needs a yard, graveyard. Cemetery is off site. Yep. Okay. So okay. this uh, this part is the graveyard, that part's the cemetery. How much is church though? Uh I knew that question was coming. Um sixteen like ninety six? I could, I'm probably mistaken. I'll be honest. I'm I'm probably wrong, but it is it's one of our oldest churches, if not the. That's oldest amazing church. that they made this without any tower tools. Well, they renamed this road. If you notice, the, the road starts to curve out around the church. Right. There's like a little, just around it, and it goes right back in line once you get past the church. It's named Church Street because it's the only building that couldn't move when they widened the road. This used to be Dock Street. And Stock Street Theater is on Church Street. How they build this thing is redesign. Redesign. <laughs> they actually had to redesign this thing several times because of fires. Wow. There was some fires that actually happened. Did that one fire that we were talking about the first place come through here? I don't. It, I'm sure it did, but I don't think that that's the one that damaged okay. it the most. I want to say there was an earlier fire. I want to say it was like a fire of like 1812 or 1814. Mm -hmm. um, something like that. Like it was way okay. earlier. Good question though. This time. This time. All right. Let's cut those cameras off. Let's give them a break.
Henry, can you tell me your son's birthday, please? When's your son's birthday? What holiday is that? Can you give us an image of that holiday? We're going to fall asleep in there if we don't get her an image soon. Stop. Henry, we're running out of time. We're down to about a minute. I've asked you a lot of questions. Last chance to kind of give us any of those answers. I love you, too. I love you, too. We're halfway through. No, we're actually almost mm -hmm. done. No activity going on whatsoever. There's nothing happening here. I definitely want to double check the library. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's, it'll flicker and you'll miss it. And at least I've seen that before. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how the people crumble sometimes. You get your words. You never know. You never know. Yep. There's some folks. Um, I don't know. Uh, but again, no answers. So if you guys honestly give any kind of even like red plum for you, the things that have been going on here. Uh, so, with that said, I think I might have still on the below average side. I don't know what to make of it. I'm going to go back to the office. Uh, so, um, I'm actually going to open up my bag. Is that still open, by the way? Sometimes it's going to be disoriented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead and slide down or get up so I can yeah. open up the bag. You guys will be able to put all of your gear that you still have. Oh, by the way, um, how do you get to your, your uh, report in the morning? Uh, most of you have a QR code on.